Ask someone who's won at Pikes Peak how they did, and you'll never hear them utter that same old cliché about conquering the track. You don't conquer Pikes Peak. The numbers are mind-boggling. A finish line at 14,115 feet up in the clouds. 156 turns, 12.42 miles, few guardrails, no second chances. With an elevation change of almost a mile, it can be raining at the bottom of the course, snowing in the middle, and bright and sunny at the top. A real driver will tell you that no matter how much you prepare, it's ultimately the mountain that decides. This year, it's the 100th running of this incredible and unique race, and David Donner, previous king of the mountain and the last American to win the race, has one goal. Take back the production car record he once owned. The time he needs to beat? 10 minutes and 18.488 seconds. His car, an almost entirely stock 2022 911 Turbo S on street tires. For as long as I've lived or been involved with Pikes Peak, this shop has been part of our racing program. And this has sort of been a base just because it's so close to the mountain. It's great. I've run Pikes Peak 28 times. I've won seven times. Three times I've been king of the mountain. Uh, my grandfather was involved with Pikes Peak in the early 40s to revive it for the Second World War. And through that, my dad gained interest from it. He had a great idea of running a Porsche at Pikes Peak. He beat all the stock cars and almost all the open wheel cars. And people had never seen a Porsche. It was a rear engine car and they were just shocked on you know, why is it so fast? My brother ran it for years in the 80s, won in 89, set an open wheel record. So my family over the years has won 12 times. You know, you go from the 40s to today and you have an event that's still going on that's still known around the world. I mean, it's it's pretty spectacular. It's, it's a, a challenge unlike any other motorsports event. Now, if you're not built for defeat, you know, you shouldn't do it. And this year's car is a 2022 Porsche Turbo S. I had the record in 2015 for production cars. So I thought, gosh, what's a good, what car would be best to take the record back? So obviously Porsche. The problem was, how am I gonna find a car? So where the idea started was really in 2020 in a sense, we wrapped a car for a photo shoot that was really just supposed to be a photo shoot of a GT2 RS Club Sport. That car turned into a race car at Pikes Peak. It's how we ended up meeting David Donner. The car was prepared in three weeks for the race in 2020 and then Donner took it to a win, which blew everyone away. That wasn't expected. I said to Donner, do you want to do this again? Because we had so much fun. And Donner said, yeah, but I don't want to do the same thing. So I thought, well, let's, what's the meanest turbo that Porsche makes and this is it. I did it because I like the challenge. Being able to partner with um, the owner, Jim Edwards, and then Triple Zero Magazine, Pete Stout, and then Champion Motorsport. You know, we just keep it low stress, keep it fun. You know, we don't want to be wrenching all night. You know, I've done that. Let's just have fun. Let's get a car that's fairly quick and I'll you know, drive as fast as I can. We started down that road and eventually we were going to need a livery. And we started to think about themes and we decided Print isn't dead. We'd made it through five years at Triple Zero, and we wanted to say, hey, we're here for print. We believe that print media has a future. One of our hardest challenges is showing people what's inside of Triple Zero. So we started to think, well, what if we wrap the car with what's inside of Triple Zero? What's spectacular about it is that it's, you see it from a distance, and it's just sort of wonderful colors, and it changes with the light, and you know, it's just, it's really cool. And then you get up to it, and you're like, oh my God. So there's actually a story a lot of the magazines I work for, and most magazines in general, you couldn't do this livery mechanically because you need 32 pages on one car to be able to do this livery. Yeah. If you only had three or five or maybe even 10 pages, you would have a lot of repetition. We did a story with Richard Meaden and Andy Morgan, a phenomenal photographer in England, on one of the very earliest 911 turbos. And Richard Meaden's story was to go back and really drive an early 930 hard to talk about how does it feel. And what he found was, it's closer to a Carrera RS than you might think. And we decided to wrap the car 
in this article on the original 911 Turbo. It's got a connection with the basis of where this car started. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I thought maybe a little faster than the 991 I'd run in 2015, and wow, it's a lot faster than that. It's a champion motorsport and was retrofitted for the rules, which means, you know, the cage has to be put in it, a fuel cell, you know, just safety stuff. Exhaust is whatever you want, and you can do stuff to the uh, fuel map because of the altitude. Otherwise, it has to be stock. It doesn't have slicks, but with Pikes Peak and all the debris on it, I don't think this kind of tire is that bad, really. I mean, it's changed my whole perspective. There's a lot of things I love. There's all sorts of stories all over the place in here. I love Tribute to the Turbo Carrera. That's a 1975 document. It's, it's a lot of fun to drive. It, it really is, and it, it runs extremely well on the mountain, which I'm, I'm very impressed with. For a street car, it's, it's fast for a race car. At Triple Zero, we're not focused only on air-cooled. We're not focused only on new. We want to cover all of the Porsche story. This car fits with what we're interested in. It's telling new stories, but it's recognizing the heritage, and that is, for us, critical. There's nothing better than, you know, being on a, that road. Just the whole experience, it's, it's unlike anything else. It's gonna be pretty spectacular. Let us put it. Well, it's, our mission was to set the production car record. With the road conditions, that's questionable. Yeah. This year, the mountain decided for everyone offering up rain and fog all day. After running behind many of the purpose-built race cars all week in practice, David's years of experience at Pikes Peak gave him an edge. Facing harsh conditions, David managed a truly impressive time of 10 minutes and 34.053 seconds, which earned him second place overall and first in the exhibition class in an almost entirely stock street car on street tires. That put him ahead of open-wheel race cars, wild Teslas, and modified 911 race cars. While he ended up short of the production car record, his lap in the wet is an inspiration. There's no better way to understand this fabled race for its 100th running than just watching it. So, here it is.
When the race ended, David drove his 911 down the course for the Parade of Champions with the other competitors, but with one key difference. Instead of getting loaded up on a trailer like the others, he just kept driving all the way to his home in Colorado Springs. It is a streetcar, after all. Thank mm -hmm. you.